go guys, um, I'm going to go through how to make a live aid trace, specifically with wire. Um, there's never ending debates about what number wire, what gauge wire, what pound wire you would use. Personally, I'm very comfortable with using number 5 or number 6. Um, you can step up to number 7 if you know that there's going to be bigger kuda or wahoo and stuff around. Otherwise, if you're catching lots of sholies or the water's really clean or you know you're not getting bites you can you can scale right down to four or even number three wire um, I'm a big fan of the American fishing wire um, it's been good to me throughout the years so for this demonstration I'm going to use number six American fishing wire okay basically what I'm doing is I'm making my lead wire so the trick with your lead wire it should be a little bit longer than a standard dead bait trace because the live baits are live so he can actually swim up the lead wire. So I'm going to make it about a meter long. Okay, so that's my lead wire and then I'm going to cut, especially if you're making a few traces, it's quite quite easy, to, it's, it's faster if you cut a whole bunch of lengths the same size and then you make the traces um, according to your live bait. Also, it's a good idea to find out what size live bait you're going to be using and you can actually use an example of a dead bait and specifically use it to measure your traces. Okay, that's my, my bite, my bite trace. So, a cooter's mouth is about as wide as your hand. So, you want to place a hook about a hand's width. So, I'm going to use one hook on this mackerel. You could probably use two. Um, but just for this demonstration, I'm going to use one, one treble in it. Okay, I'm using um, hood limbs. I'm using a 1 -0. That's going to be my lead hook and my pulling hook. I'm going to use one on the front. And then I'm using a size 4 mustard, 4 extra strong, that's very important. Um, I would not use anything under a 4 extra strong, not for saltwater game fish. Um, you can use the lighter gauge hooks if you're fishing for bass and stuff like that. But 4x is your minimum you're going to use for saltwater use. Okay, again you can scale up the size of the hook. Um, I'm just going standard here, size 4 is my general size hook that I use for I'd say 80% of my fishing. Okay, it doesn't really matter what order you do it in, but I'm going to start at the back and work my way forward. So I'm putting my my treble hook on. I'm just doing a standard haywire twist. So you can see it's uh, on the back of the packaging if you're not sure how to do that. But you do 345s and 390 degree turns. I'm just going to do this quickly. Okay, and then I'm breaking it off flush. That's another whole video altogether. And then, as I said, I'm measuring it. I want to put the live bait, the treble, about there. So my lead hook's going to go there. And I'll make sure I've got enough tag in to actually tie the, tie the wire off. Bend it over. 3.45. Three ninety, at least. When I say three, I mean you must do at least three turns of each, and then it won't slip. So that's your, that's your general trace. Um, so I'm going to put that there, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lead wire, and I interlock it. Obviously, these are not solid welded hooks, the hood limbs. So I go through the eye of the hook, and I go through my wire so that they are they are interlocked. Let me tie it off and I'll explain to you a little bit better how that works. Three turns. Another three turns. So if you can see there, the wires are actually interlocked. So the one loop is through the other loop, like a link of chains. So it can't pull out of the of the eye of the hook where, there's, where it's not welded solidly closed. Um, it doesn't happen very often. I don't think I've... I can't remember the last time that happened. Um, but yeah, I do think it's important to, to use a good quality lead hook. Um, often that's the hook that saves you. Okay, then what I do is I've got a, I've got a green and a pink bead here. Um, what I do is I use a pink bead for if it's a mackerel trace and I'll use a green bead if it's, uh, if it's for like a mozzie or a shad if I'm putting two trebles in line. So it's more for me when I'm looking through my tackle box I know that Pink is big and green is small. <laughs> I don't know if it really makes a difference, but uh, for me, that's that's the my only 
reasoning for using beads to be honest. I'm just sliding the bead over here just to know what it is. Whether it makes a difference to the fish, I don't know. Mm, catching everything out. And then I'm going to finish it off with a power saw. So again, I'm using a size 6 here, 6, 5, 4, no problem. And again, I'm just going to slide it down top of my lead wire, which is quite long. Just finishing it off. Three turns, breaking it off. So that's my whole trace. So it's about a meter long, well, not quite a meter, but it is quite long. Okay, now, rigging it, there's a few ways to rig the live bait. Obviously, you can't hook him through both jaws because then you close his mouth and you can't breathe and he's going to drown. So, there's a few ways. I mean, with a mackerel, you can go through the top lip, behind the bone, there's a jawbone. As long as you go behind the jawbone, it doesn't necessarily pull out. And then, you can either hook the treble in his side, like so, or what I like to do is I like to go straight down his back and I go in the one side and I push the treble out the other side. And I find if you push the barb out the other side, when he swims he doesn't kick the treble out and he swims a little bit better like that. Um, I find if you rig the live bait through the top lip this way vertically, when you pull him he does want to fight on his side. So as you're trawling him he, he wants to fight on his side. So I found a, a, a slightly more natural way, obviously he gives a little bit more action, probably going to draw a little bit more attention to himself by rigging him that way. But again, that's, that's personal preference. But I find they swim a little bit better and they live a bit longer if you actually go sideways through his nostrils. So in the one nostril and out the other nostril. So when you trawl him, he actually swims like directly behind you instead of fighting left and right on the surface. And then again, as I said, I go down, the, down his back push the treble in and push the bob out and that's how and then obviously I've got my, my little bead so I can see what color and what, what length trace it is then obviously if if, a lab, if, if something's chasing him he'll, he'll often swim up the lead wire so that's why it's quite important because it often will hook on the treble like that and that's how you get bitten off so it is quite important to make a quite a long lead wire especially on a lab bait trace and that's my lab bait trace as I said, you can, uh, you can add an extra treble if you wanted to. I'll just tie it in line. So you, you just add one onto there, piece of wire onto there, and just put another, and you can put another treble. I wouldn't use a second snoot, another, a second piece of wire coming off, because you know, you've got wire on both sides. You can't really hide it so well in the live bait. So just tie everything in line. You can also put a bigger hook if you're worried about uh, the number four, but I've had no problem with number fours in the past. I've caught plenty of fish in it. So that's your live bait trace rigged with wire for toothy fish.